Name another podcast like this. Who gonna bring it to the table? Boss talk. Who your girlfriend favorite? Boss talk. Check, check, check This is Unique House This is your boy ECO And I'm here with the lovely Amazing official Miss Jamaica What's going on? No, no, you know My Well, go on I want y'all to stop What you're doing right now And go like, subscribe Follow us on all Social media platforms I mean our TikTok Instagram, Facebook Snapchat, you name it We're on it But definitely You need to check out Patreon If y'all have not been on Patreon That's where we drop our All of our Full length interviews Before he start clipping Before anybody else Start seeing it The sign up for our membership And our YouTube membership Y'all say you like what we do. Y'all want to support us? Go ahead and sign up for our membership. Appreciate it. Man, hey, man, listen, man. Thank you guys for watching the show, man. Listen, man, we got a guest in here today that don't really need... Do I say it every time? You said it every time. I'm well, get used to it. You know what I'm saying? It's my channel. I'm going to do it, it how I feel. You know what I'm saying? Y'all, listen, it, if you want me to stop saying, you know, she doesn't need an introduction or he don't need a, an introduction. Yes. I mean, you know, whatever. What you want to do about it? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> No, we got a special guest in there today, y'all, and she don't need no introduction. She's a uh, man. This this young lady right here, love after lockup, life after lockup. You know this this here is this here is wild. I never would have thought I even got to meet this young lady, man. Monique is in the building. What's going on? Hey, what's going on, y'all? <laughs> We're happy to have you here today. Um, but. For me personally, I like to get to know you as a person. I don't care who sits in the seat and how popular they are. I want to know where you came from. I want to know your humble beginnings, all of that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. I know you were born and raised in Chicago, right? Yes. What part? Uh, the west side of Chicago. The west side? Mm hmm well, you know. let me just say this about the West Side. You know, they stand in front of them stoves over there. I went out there. I couldn't go in. I was nervous. I had been watching the news back then. I quit watching it since then. But, yeah, I was like, dang, man, I need to go to the North Side. <laughs> it was something about going to the north side that made me feel a little better. But we're going to get it. I want to hear about this West Side. I did go over there and interview a few people, though. But, yeah. I mean, you know, it's a hype about Chicago mm -hmm. that have people at kind of they they kind of we don't know you know what i'm saying but at the end of the day I, I met some great people up there but yeah west side that's that's that i couldn't get out of it though when i went it was like <laughs> big is it bigger than everything else yeah the west side is pretty big that's what i thought yeah it seemed to be like the biggest part of it right mm -hmm. when we was riding it out trying to figure it out i'm like man i ain't gonna never get out the west side i'm not i'm, I'm not coming back <laughs> but one thing i liked about it though i love the fact that way how i saw people would be always it felt like community in some sort of way where people would always be outside chilling, hanging out. Um, so I know everybody know everybody. Everybody be looking out for everybody in some sort of way or fashion. Is that how it is? Or that I just got a wrong idea? No, the West Side is like <clears throat> everybody know everybody. Right. But we grew up so sheltered. Like we just didn't go outside and hang out. Really? With yeah. So... I thought everybody, because when you drive on the street, everybody be outside just chilling. No, yeah. she didn't go out. Her yeah. mom and dad and them weren't putting up with that. <laughs> yeah. now, I can tell you right now, is that, am I right? Right. Yeah. So yeah. you were raised with your mom and dad? Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. how long had they been together? Uh, They're still together right now. They've been married for over, what, 30 years? Wow. Yeah. Man, that's so, a long time. Mm -hmm. But growing up, how did you, um, did you... You saw them together. How did you feel? Because, you know, a lot of households don't have that. Mm -hmm. A mom and dad in it. Did you notice that growing up? That, you know, other friends of yours didn't have that? Yeah, a lot of my friends, they really didn't have fathers in their household. But... Um, did you feel special because of that? How did that make you feel? Did you... Or you didn't even care? Honestly, I didn't really think too much about it. Mm. Yeah, so... Yeah, she had it. They didn't, you know. My mama left <laughs> my daddy, and he was I was nine, and she just decided she didn't want to be with that nigga no more. <laughs> so she took off, and we went with her, and I went back to my daddy because she really couldn't handle me. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So you know how that go, but yeah. you you blessed not to have to go through that. You wanted to talk. Your mom and daddy was together for 48 years. I know, but everybody, a lot it. of people who sit in that seat, it's always, yeah, I was raised right. by my mother. My dad was a Rolling Stone, blah, 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 or I didn't know my dad. Mm -hmm. I hear that a lot. So I want to say a 10% of people are in your shoes. Yeah. Yeah, my dad, he was very active in my life growing up That's and good. I feel like I'm closer to my father than I am to my mother really anyway. yeah. daddy's girl yeah <laughs> wow so how, how many kids um I have five sisters That's so old. all girls all girls no boys no brothers ooh age difference um range from anywhere between what like 41 
to 19. To 19. Mm -hmm. Wow. Same mother and same father. Yep. That's hard. Well, yeah, same mother, yeah. Wow. That's good. Wow. But not same father? Uh, three of my sisters, we have the same father. Okay. Um, my two older sisters have different fathers. Different fathers. Mm -hmm. Wow. And all of you lived in the same household? Yes, we all lived in the same household. What was it like growing up with all girls? A lot of cat fights? <laughs> it was crazy. We was always, you heard everybody arguing. Some Every day, some one of us is arguing with each other. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Shoot, I let y'all go outside. Go outside. Get, you know, you talk about your parents didn't let you outside. I couldn't deal with all them girls in the house. I'm like, y'all go outside and play with your friends. Go outside. I can't deal with that. Mm -hmm. That's too much. Yes. So what did you like doing as a kid growing up? As a kid, I was pretty quiet. I was always pretty much to myself. Really? So, yeah. We grew up as, like, we didn't really have many friends because my mom raised us to, you know, y'all don't need friends. Like, y'all had each, had each other. other. Mm-hmm. So were y'all so, each other best friends? Yeah, we all were pretty close. That's good. Let's mm -hmm. get down to the business. Mm -hmm. Was it dangerous or not over there on the west side? Because you know we seen the we seen the movies. Okay, I seen Barbershop too. <laughs> I seen a few movies about Chicago. So tell me, is it really is it safe? You know, I came and I ain't gonna lie to you. I skated by the about the second time and stayed in Naperville because I knew. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> So how is it like just uh, is that is, uh, cause we can just debunk the whole uh, it's this is that for you how was it was there danger was there gang violence was there was it just good living? Of course it was it was gang violence but we grew up staying out the way like That's we okay. wasn't the people that ran the streets and was doing things we were not supposed to be doing we went to school we came home and you know that was it we didn't hang out in the streets that's hard so yeah so you can live up there as a family man and got your wife and kids and you know what i'm saying and, and be and stay out the way yeah that's hard I but like then it. but then that's crazy because just like how you said your parents kept you out of the streets out of out of trouble and so forth i know people who say that they were raised in good households with mom and dad and strict parents and still end up the streets keep calling and they still end up going on the street, especially when they get of age where their mom and dad can't tell them nothing. I'm like, I can move out. Mm -hmm. So how come you didn't have that drive to like be on the street? And I'm asking this from perspective because I'm a parent mm -hmm. and being a parent, you always want to know how to keep your kids. What's the right way to do what to do, what not to do to keep your kids from not going that route. I would say, my mother and my father, like, they pretty much gave us any and everything that we wanted. So it was like we didn't need to go to the streets for anything. So we we just pretty much, they just raised us right, I guess. Like Monique, <laughs> which one of your sisters like the bad boy? Listen, that bad boy, one of them five, is it five of them? Five of y'all? Six of us. Six of y'all. Mm-hmm. One of them like the bad boy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he was out there. You like, how she end up talking to him? Was that you? No. You like the good guys. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like the bad ones so I actually got older in age. Like, when I was younger, I wasn't fast. I wasn't worried about men. And I think that's how I was with all of my sisters. Like, we didn't... We waited until we got up in age. Until, you know, once we got out of high school and stuff like that to entertain guys. Damn, that's that's that, y'all just some good girls, then. You know, but I just don't. I I wish I could have been a how they say it a, a, a fly on the wall, boy, to be in that house. You know, because that, that it's something about you know family, man. You know what I'm saying? For y'all, yeah. a family that prays together stays together, though. I will say that. You know, it had to be something that kept y'all knitted. You know, throughout the years. You know what I mean? Yeah. So kudos to y'all for getting it right, man. Because we need more of that in our communities. You know, we've been together for 20 years and. You know, um, raising family and trying to put family first. You know what I mean? And so I get it, man. So, I mean, you know, you are here in Dallas, Texas, man. You pulled up on me. Yes. Man, thank you so <laughs> much, man. We, we love the fact that you came here first. This is it, the first stop. Let's just be real about it. Yes, right thing. off the plane. That's right. There ain't nothing <laughs> wrong with coming here first. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. we going to get into the show, right? Mm hmm Okay, so... First of all, how does the show even happen? That's what I was wanting to know. Like, how do you end up on this show? Well, the show was nothing that I've ever applied to be on. Like, when I met Derek, I was in, like, a women's support group 
who had incarcerated boyfriends and husbands. So it was more so like we all were in the group talking about our experiences, our relationships with the men that we were dating. And um, who introduced you to that support group? Um, actually, just scrolling Facebook, and I had saw like prison wife girlfriend support group. Okay. Uh, because a lot of my friends they didn't understand like why I chose to waste my time and deal with somebody in prison. Let me stop you right there because <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you. You didn't waste your time. I'm gonna be real with you. You know, my mom. I told you she left right, mm -hmm. but I didn't tell you about Jimmy Fields. See, Jimmy Fields was right in my mama's house, and my daddy didn't know it. And I, I seen these letters. I didn't really understand what was going on at the time. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But Jimmy Fields was locked up. And he was giving her all these good scenarios about what he could do, but he couldn't do much because he was locked up. Mm -hmm. And I think he got into her head. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because she ends up moving and leaving. I never told you this story, mm -hmm. really. But, yeah, Jimmy Fields, them letters we didn't see at the house because Mama hid them. Mm -hmm. You know, we cleaned the old house out and found some letters from yeah, my mama and my daddy away. after my mm -hmm. daddy passed away. And I was mm -hmm. happy about those. But you wouldn't have seen the Jimmy Fields. And how you knew about them letters? I used to be nosy as hell. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so she was writing this dude that was in prison on my dad. Mm. And Jimmy Fields was his name. Now, how do you end up writing somebody that's locked up? Honestly, um, I was scrolling on Facebook and I just came across like a like a Facebook, like, prison pen pal group. Really? And he, yeah, and he was the first guy that I seen. So, and he was handsome. I liked what I what he said, and I had reached out to him. Wow. I was bored. It was, like, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. It's always boredom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're like, you know what, let me go ahead. How long did you have to wait on this nigga when he was locked up? What do you mean, how long I had to wait you on You had to him? wait till he come home. Uh, like two and a half years. Would you do that again if you ever had I to do that? I would never do it again. Like for a nigga to be locked never. up and, and you out here with all these strong men. Look at that. We out here in the flesh. <laughs> but you were seeing all the he people while he was locked up? No. She was you don't know? No. You were faithful, wasn't you? No. In the beginning, I was <laughs> seeing other men. <laughs> so, okay, so when you wrote him initially, you had a boyfriend? I didn't have a boyfriend, but I was dating other You were dating guys. all the guys. Uh -huh. Okay, so when did it fall like, when did you be like, okay, yeah, he might be the one? Maybe like a year into the relationship. What did he say to, to, to make you fall? Because, honestly, he started doing things for me that those other guys really wasn't doing. Like, he was, like, sending me money, like, for my birthday, like... From in prison? Mm-hmm. Like, he was doing things for me, like, sending flowers and stuff. So, I was like, okay, he's, you know, showing me, right. you know, a little bit of effort. So, I'll entertain it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he was... Did you ever go visit? No, because we met around COVID. So, oh, okay. Um, you know, they shut down visits mm -hmm. for all the visits and everything. So. so, you didn't see him in person for the whole two and a half years? Nope. Wow. <laughs> That's crazy. So, he yeah. had a phone? No, he didn't have a phone. Okay, you, know, you know, they'd be sneaking cell phones in there where you can, like, FaceTime and stuff like that. No, we didn't have a phone, but we did video chat. Uh-oh. Yeah. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. <laughs> How y'all video chat? Was he in the cell or was he in the visitation room? No, in the visitation room. What the hell they had, going like, on? Yes. <laughs> he's trying to see how, how nasty the guy. That's exactly what he's trying to get to. No, so, I mean, I you know, it's, it's, them niggas been gone a long time. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, so, you basically, you know, so... It's a crazy thing, though. You when 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 everything's said and done, you end up this film and all. I want to know about this. We this film that came out on we like. How did y'all end up getting to that point? Well, I was in communication with the casting director, okay. and you know she liked me as a person. She felt like me and Derek we had an interesting you know relationship. Um, so you kind of created it. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. And then they also like the fact that we never saw each other in person. Right. They like the fact like, oh, the first time y'all going to be meeting each other is the day he get out of prison. Like, we want to see how that goes. And, um. So you, you know, met her from the, for Facebook? I'm sorry? The casting director. How did you meet the casting director? Well, because I guess they were, like, looking for people to be on the show. So, they mm. were, like, in these groups, like, okay. talking to people. So in I the wasn't, Facebook groups, Yeah, right. so I wasn't the only person that they reached mm -hmm. out to. They reached out to 
um, a lot of other women in the groups too. It seemed okay. like you was one of the most popular ones to me. <laughs> so, so do, do you, when you did it, do you feel like like how did it change your life? The way people were, you know, responding to to you. I would say I think it, it changed me because people automatically assumed that I was an insecure person because I reached out to a man in prison. And I was never insecure before the show even, you know, started. I think once it aired and things went the way it went was when my insecurity kind of started. But over the time, it's like, you know, I'm not going to allow, you know, people to change the way that I feel about myself. So. What were some of those things like that made people think that you was insecure? Or how, what made you feel like people thought that? Like, you got to think about it. Did I mean, the comments, they, 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 they can be brutal. And I think it was because a lot of people was not used to seeing a bigger plus size woman on TV. Yeah. They, they automatically assume a bigger woman, like a man has to have an ulterior motive. Like, oh, she must be spending money on him. Or, you know, they don't feel like a man could just love a plus size woman just because they love, you know, they feel like. Uh, they whoever, have to have an ulterior motive. Whoever they is is shelter because I didn't seen this all my life. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. in, in certain situations, when you think about it, there's somebody that somebody loves, and it's always something that you can't put your hand on because it ain't their business, no way. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So right. that doesn't surprise yeah, me. Yeah, because I know a couple you know men I mean? right now that will not even talk ever to a slim girl. Right. Exactly. So that's that's what I can't. But the comments again, people. There's all type of people out here because we get it as well, and they thinking this and saying this, and that's what they do. So mm -hmm. yeah, I get it. I could see that being a thing for them because when you look at the uh, Lizzos and the Moniques and the different people that have came about, there always have been things that people would pinpoint for them because they're brutal. People mm -hmm. are not. People are. There's a lot of evil people in this world. Everybody's not nice. Um, I can remember a time when I was crazy as hell, so I know it ain't. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's, it's 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 just it's it's a known fact. So when you think about it, like like, how do you feel? Are you comfortable like doing the show now? Like in in the way you looked on the show, did you like the way it turned out? I'm comfortable now because now I'm secure and I know who I am at this very moment. Back then, I would say, I think. After watching it back and, you know, all the, you know, infidelity and everything that took place, it kind of made me insecure because it was like, why is it that, you know, you cheated with all these different women? It wasn't one woman or two women. It was, you know, over 10 women. So, yeah. That nigga was a ho He was a whore. <laughs> Wait a minute. So, it was 10, over 10? I don't know. That's what was said. But, I mean. Did you, I mean, you know, because I, I didn't watch every episode, but did you, you called him red-handed? I never caught him red-handed. So, you don't, you know. What you think? I mean, it is what it is. It's the past. Like, I don't really You left dwell. that nigga, huh? I don't really do too much on it no more. It is what it is. So, you and you pretty much gone. It's yeah, over. Yeah. Never, never again. Never again. But before this situation, you know how your life wasn't in the limelight. You know, one thing I always say about people who now become in the limelight, as in celebrities and stuff like that, your life is now an open book to everybody to see and scrutinize. Do you ever feel like, man, I wish I didn't? I don't think I feel like I wish I, I didn't. No. I no just regrets? feel like it was just no regrets because I just took it as a lesson. Mm -hmm. You know, I know better for next time. To make yourself stronger. Yes. Because now forward, your life is going to be out there for everybody to see and know and scrutinize continually. Right. Well, you know, you set up cameras like me. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm so, I mean, did you ever do any good on your camera heist? You know, you know, setting the cameras up, trying to figure things out. I never set up any cameras. Oh, because that was, that was cap. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you, I mean, you was a super spy. You, you got the phone, you, you would look through it, you know. Do you be? The, I leave mine open because I don't want no problems. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, whatever she can see, I can see. Whatever I can see, she can see. Mm -hmm. I mean, is that the way you get out or, or no? Ooh. I mean, I only felt like I had to, you know, be in investigative mode because he obviously was doing sneaky stuff. So it's like I wanted to see what's going on. <laughs> so how did you end up? Like, what did you? What's your first thought? Like, let me get me. Uh, 
not cameras, but I'm gonna check this damn phone. Yeah, I'm gonna check the phone. Check location. You got a you? Did you put an app on it or anything? Mm-hmm. So you could tell when when he would say he would hear or there. Yeah. You really? Do you might need to get in detective work. <laughs> <laughs> so do you think you would do this with like all any any guy or just that particular situation? I would never do that with another guy because if I feel like I have to go through your phone, check your location, and do all that, like you're not the man for me. Like I want to be secure in my relationship. I want to be able to trust somebody. So I would never do that again in another relationship. You had evidence and reason. Yeah. You know, you know that's what the police say if they have any reasonable reason to do this. You know what I mean? You had you had things that made triggered you into doing this. You had skin in the game too. Right. Because you had been. You know, being there for somebody who didn't have that somebody. You was there for him as well, whether it was monetarily or whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. I mean, a lot of times people do think, well, you got that. She be a bigger frame girl. She a plus size, so she going to let him buy her car or drive. Or, you know what I'm saying? Or she going to buy him a car. Or, did you ever buy a lot of expensive gifts for her? No. So he was using you. <laughs> you said I mean, he, you were using him. I wouldn't say I was using him. I feel like when in a relationship, like you it help each other out. It's a give and take. It's a, yeah, it's a give and take. Okay, so, well, yeah, I, I can dig it. I'm just trying to figure out what the handle was. So the nigga just was hoeing, really more than anything. That's all I'm hearing. That's what niggas do. You know, I ain't gonna lie. Some of them. Now, when you get a mature man, a real Mendingo warrior. <laughs> you know what I'm <laughs> you know, when you get your one, a real stomp down. A uh, man who mm-hmm. already test stood the test of time, right? Mm-hmm. And he got to believe in God too. I got to say that. But you you won't have to go through those things. Exactly. Well, how how precautious are you going to be on this next election? I mean, you in Dallas. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of men here in Dallas, Texas. I mean, he's looking for a woman. You know what I'm saying? Somebody that they can hold on to at night. You know what I'm saying? How are you going to make the choice this time? What's what? What's your steps? Give me a little rundown. That's why I'm looking for an unk. Uh, a southern unk uh, in Dallas. <laughs> explain to me what you see in an unk. What is an unk to you? An older man. Like oh, somebody that has experience. That can teach daddy. me new things. That know how to treat a woman. How old are you? know, over 45. Uh, what's the oldest you'll date? I would say 65. Okay. I've always dated older men though. Like yeah. he was one of the youngest guys I ever dated. Mm. So I that was me stepping outside of my comfort zone. Uh-huh. But now I'm just like, you know, I'm gonna go back to what I'm used to. Older men that, you know Faithful. Faithful. <laughs> somebody who knows how to take care of a woman. Oh, but there's some old hoes out here too now. You know what I'm saying? Don't get it twisted. <laughs> they stick with it. Yeah, they, it's some old hoes out here that'll take care of you and cheat on you at the same time. You feel me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he's just going to be slick about it. He got two right, houses. Exactly. It's all about he, the way you do oh, it. Oh, he going to do it. It's going to be respectful. He gonna, I don't oh, want to so go into okay too much detail. With it, as long yeah. as you don't know about it? I'm not okay with it, but at the same time, don't give me a reason. Well, not even don't give me a reason. But if you're going to be cheating, at least be slick about it. Because I've met women who say, as long as he's taking care of her home, he's taking care of me, you don't have no woman stepping to me, nobody calling my phone, I'm good. I've heard women, old school women, who would tell me that because they know that men going to be men, they're going to step out there and do what they do anyway. Mm-hmm. Is that you? It's not me. But I also have heard of a respectful way and a disrespectful way to cheat. Mm. What's the respect? So if you way? decide to cheat, don't be disrespectful. Don't be having a woman go through your phone calling me and you know doing all the extra stuff like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't. Yeah, don't call my house. <laughs> That's what you mean. Don't, and that means my cell phone that I can look at the bill. Right. Don't. But I want a man who don't cheat mm-hmm. at all. Yeah. No. Were you faithful the whole time? Let's be real. Don't this ball talk one on one. Ah, uh, that's what I thought, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> no, in the beginning of the relationship, we wasn't committed to each other. He was still locked up. Okay, that was, once you were I'm committed. About once he came home. Yeah, I was faithful. Never once did you even, you know, because the Bible said if you even think on a man in that way. No. Okay. I was completely faithful. Wow. And you was completely let down. You the victim. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> <laughs> you the victim. I was, yeah, wouldn't you say that? 
I want to say I was a victim. Why? Why? How? How are you? I not? just feel like he he just didn't know what he had, and he just fumbled it basically. Have anybody? Have you tried to get back? Since when? Since all because it's kind of been like up and down. Yeah, here lately. Have you tried to? Get- not for the past month. Oh, that nigga coming back. You too. I don't want him nigga. back. He gonna be calling. Change your number because he called. I don't want him. Nigga call Would you him ever back. date another person coming out of prison? No. Don't never say never. Mm-mm. Them niggas be buff. <laughs> 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 don't never say never. Don't ever say never. You don't know. No. You mean in prison or just getting out? We don't know. No. He could be. He could be on, on your at the halfway house. <laughs> you know, you know, you know. You know the halfway house You can get out during the day But you gotta go back at night <laughs> No <laughs> I want somebody that's already got their shit together I feel you That's already established <laughs> I ain't trying to build a man up But I want him already together I heard you say in an interview um, That in your relationship You stuck it out because you thought he would change mm-hmm. But then you know What came to my mind You know Whenever you said that is majority of women, we all think that way, but we still know that you don't ever date somebody thinking that you're going to change them because it never usually happened. However they are, that's who they are. Mm-hmm. So you knew that, right? It was more so like I would, I know he was just getting out of prison. He's been in prison for almost 10 years mm-hmm. since he was, you know, 19. So I was just hoping like, I see some type of growth, not even change, not change, change him, but just growth. Okay, okay. So that's I think I was sticking around, waiting to see, like, okay, when is he gonna grow up? Like, it, mm. it's been some time now. Got it. Wow. Um. So you've moved on. He's moved on. Mm-hmm. Um. And it, no smoke, nothing else. I mean, now you you've moved on. He's got him a new female. Um, you looking for you a new boo unk up here in Dallas? Unk. Southern unk. In, in Dallas, you gonna get a southern one? Need southern one. No Shreveport right down the street too. You know what I'm saying? What's then we got Port? Arlington right there. Louisiana. And you got Louisiana. Yeah, it's all this. You and you and you right here in the midst of it. Okay. The South, the dirty South. Arkansas, you keep going down thirty. All this stuff. How you gonna attack it? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> nah, you're a beautiful lady, man. You got how, how you go? How, I mean, you know, a guy comes to what what impresses what how do a guy impress you? How do we, you know what I'm saying? How do we get next to you? I love a guy with a, a good sense of humor, because I love to laugh. Yeah, that's me. I be cutting up. So that's how that you be, can that's like, how I got her right there. Get my attention. <laughs> right? If you say so. Well, how did I get you? The clone. Was a clone with it. Cologne and yeah, and God. I knew it was a clone. You know what I'm talking about. And that you're God fearing man. Back then I wear Issy Malky. You niggas don't go get it. It ain't smelling the same no more. They done changed up the code. This what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was that blue, wasn't it? I wore that Issy no, blue. The regular. regular. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got it with that. I knew it was gonna get it. You like a man who wear a lot? Not a lot of cologne, but smell good when yeah. you come in. But you said that nigga smell good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So what, what's up Like like in Chicago Like where's a nice place Like where do you go out When you uh, the sing, Like where do the singles go I don't know You can't go See you must have been In the holiness church <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, I'm trying to figure this out Like you don't know Where to go I really don't You gotta like, stay off That Facebook Them I'm locked really, up niggas Gonna get you in trouble <laughs> I'm really a homebody How you expect To get somebody At the I house I know I know But I'm I'm out in Dallas So hopefully I feel like my husband is here. It can Ooh. be because you talk about I was here. a homebody when I got you. <laughs> yeah, but when I, you know, when I come through, <laughs> I will float. Never did hit the flow, just, <laughs> just gliding through. But so, do you think like like you you think Dallas is is a good place? I mean, would you ever do a show like you remember them shows where you would where people would try to meet you? You know what I mean? Want to meet different? Would you ever do a show like that? Like a matchmaking? Yeah, a matchmaking type show. I would. That'd be hard. Yeah. Because you already got a, you got a, you, you already, uh, you got a brand and everybody know who you are. So mm-hmm. you see what I'm saying? Yeah. I think that'll be live. You might think about that because you get, that's a, and it, and it, it's a plus because it, it just keeps everything going. what do you think? Yeah. And then plus I get to, 
date a lot of men at once. Oh, and Lord. They them that out, ain't like, the I point. Like, like, I didn't even like, think know. about that damn point. Mm-hmm. You, 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 uh, huh. she, she didn't say she didn't say <laughs> she going to be romantically like having sex with all of them or nothing like that. She just said she's going to date them. Yeah. There's a difference. Yeah. And I'm going to ask you this one more thing about the other guy. Like, his girl, did, 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 have you ever heard any, any of them, you say they come back at you or nobody calling, did somebody reach out to you, come at you in the wrong way? Who? Like, he, he, the, the other guy, I don't want to say his name, you mm-hmm. know, staying away from it. Mm-hmm. Derek, I think his name was. <laughs> did, did his girl or any of them, his newfound friends reach out to you or anything because they know the show? You know what I mean? Like, they know you was the girl. And everybody know you was with him. Do they try to do messy stuff? Of course. Try to play you into situations, call your phone, hang up, or, or get on Facebook. That's what they do, get on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. But, you know, they sit and they argue with themselves. Because you, don't you don't ever respond. say nothing. I don't respond. But they want a, a response. A, yeah, and it's a waste of time. Because if, if that's who you're with, why are you trying to get a reaction out mm-hmm. of me? Wow. Because... Because you they know what's going on. Yeah, they know what's going on. So do you feel like 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 you shine a light on people? From what you said, you reach out and you you created this thing where they wanted to be a part of y'all brand because you evidently were the one making the moves for the show to even happen, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and that's star power, really. That, that that's that's a hustler mentality. Like like for them to reach out to you and say, okay, we could do this when he get out or whatever. And now you put him in the limelight. Did he have to sign papers and stuff to even do all that he had to? Yeah. And so everybody was going good. You thought it would have been marriage and all that at that point. You at thought, one point, I did feel like you see what I'm saying. Yeah, we would have been married, but yeah. But that was that was before he proposed. Yeah, before he proposed. Yeah. Like we was fantasizing, really, because mm-hmm. that's what y'all do. My mama used to do it when they locked up. You know <laughs> <laughs> that's a fantasy world. No, but no, you actually, like when he come home, we gonna get married. No, but when he actually got out and got me a ring, it was like okay, like he for real. And you believed him. I believed him. Damn. But you know, things happen. Life yeah. goes on. What would your advice be to other women? Because I know a few women who sit down for years waiting for that person to come out and even when they come out and they're together for a little bit I know somebody waiting now they go right back (laughs) in they go right back in and they're waiting again Mm -hmm. what do you how do you advise these women um, to should they get out of it should they not get get into it should they what my advice would be baby live your life okay if you're going to take a man serious, straight out of prison, allow him to come home and establish himself. Let him, you know, figure out what it is that he wants. Like, don't sit around and waste... I don't even want to say waste your time, but... Just don't go by words. Go by actions. Wait till he, till come he comes out and can fulfill it. Feel it. Yeah. And you have an... Um, so now you're signed again to another episode, Right. Yes, I signed on for another, another season. Not a complete season. It's like a um, like a follow up. Like a follow up. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what can we expect from it? Just basically like what I'm up to now, like how things have been since the breakup. Okay. Um, me working on my wig line. I'm doing um, brand ambassador deals. I'm looking forward to some more traveling, doing more BBW body positivity events, mm-hmm. and I'm working on my lip kit. So is that um, wig that you have on, that's your line? I'm sorry? Is that your line that you have on now? No, this is not my hairline that I have oh, okay. on right yeah. You're supposed to be wearing your hairline all the time, girl. <laughs> I'm still what working on about? vendors. I'm still working on vendors to get samples and stuff like that. So it's not quite perfected yet. So it's still in the process. Okay. Mm-hmm. But you do BBW events, right? hmm Let me ask you a question about that. Have you, growing up, have you always been a BBW? Yes. All your life? hmm Okay, so... I know that um, people sometimes, especially recently, with social media and stuff like that, can be very cruel with people who are plus size, right? Especially if you are very confident. I love a plus size woman who, I think, because I have a couple of friends who are so confident, they'll wear whatever, walk on the street, don't care. They, they dress better than some people who are not plus size. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, how do you feel about Woman, when people say that plus size women shouldn't be dressing so revealing, so sexy, so this, so that, what would you say to those people? I would say just, if you're confident, just be who you are. Don't allow other people 
opinions affect how you feel about yourself. If you feel like you look good in it, if that's what makes you feel good, do it. Don't worry about what other people think. Yeah, because what I think about, I don't always think about the adults who are plus size who are trying to put that image out there. I'm thinking about the kids who are coming up who are having issues with that confidence. Because when you're a kid and you're plus size, that's when you're battling with that the most to me. Mm -hmm. Until you come into yourself and build that confidence up to say, you know what, I don't care about nobody saying this is what I love to do, this is how I love to dress, this is how I express myself. Mm -hmm. That's who I think about because they're looking up to a lot of women, looking up to you when they see you and they see how you dress confident and how you're walking with your head up high and you don't care about what nobody says a lot of children are looking up to you who are that you know mm -hmm. so that those are the kids that I'd be thinking about yeah I want to go back into uh, this guy and your family how did they feel about you uh, seeing this guy that was locked up because that's something they never liked him from day one. Oh, they didn't they didn't even want to deal with it at all. none of them not one <laughs> but no. they didn't but they didn't know him they just didn't like the fact how I was wasting my time talking to, to somebody that was incarcerated. They didn't like that. Really? Mm -hmm. But that didn't stop you. It didn't. And so, and, and, I, and I get it because they didn't want to see you go through it because they know when that nigga get out. Mm -hmm. That's how you be thinking when you, <laughs> when that nigga get out. <laughs> that nigga is going to do you wrong. He going to, he going to turn on you. I'm mm -hmm. just telling you how family, because they, they love you, they try to protect you, you know what I'm saying? Well, that nigga get out! Mm -hmm. He ain't going to do right. And they told each other that over and over again. I could yeah. damn well believe. Did they, put a riff? <laughs> Did they put a riff in between you and your family a little bit? I would say once he got out and they knew like I was on my way to go see him, they was just like, that's crazy. Did they meet? They met him, of course. No, my mom and my dad, they never met him. They didn't want to meet him. Mm-mm. Mm -mm. But your sisters did. Yeah, my sisters met him. And when mm. they met him, what did they tell you? <laughs> he ain't for you. They knew it already. They but knew. you couldn't see it. I couldn't. Love was blinded. It definitely is. Yeah, love <laughs> will blind you. I'm blind now. <laughs> but, <laughs> so, 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 like, like when, when, but the thing is, it's funny because. That's a whole deal because when you do start dealing with somebody that's incarcerated, you become codependent. So you start being locked up with them in a sense. Let's yeah. be real. Mm -hmm. That I tell my daughter, she work at the prison. I'll be like, girl, you lie. she locked up half the time too because you got to go in there with them. So it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So like, like the thing is, I, I'm glad you kind of, you know, you, you switching it up a little bit. That's all I can say. I, I appreciate the... Uh, the switch up, you know. I can't wait to see this new new episode of follow up to see what happened. Which I hope you can find your man here in Dallas, man. You know what I'm saying? What's your IG when people if they trying to get a hold of you? Uh, my IG is Miss Nick and my S S dot N I Q U E. All right, now y'all heard that? Y'all better get on it, Dallas. Stand up. No. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> so I, I definitely know that I'm going to be staying in tune with everything, man. I just, when I thought about it and seen just how you, uh, you know, kind of how you, you know, went through all of this, it was fascinating to me because I know a lot of people. I still, to this day, I write prisoners. I know prisoners. I, you know, that's a part of what I do just for, just to give them. I'm not trying to go with them. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to be there for them. You know what I mean? Right. So I'll send some money or whatever. If I'm rocking with whoever I see them go in jail, let me write them and send them something. Because, you know, people people want to, you know, it's lonely in that damn place when you ain't got nobody. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, you know, but but then once you go through it, it's like you were locked up with them, you don't want to go back through that no more. You no, know what I'm saying? definitely not. You definitely don't want to go with that. What would you, what, what, if you could go back and change anything in this whole situation, what would you have changed? I would have changed, I would have created more boundaries and I would have not gave so many chances. So after I saw the first red flag, I would have walked away. Had yeah. I known it was going to turn out the way that it turned out. What was the first red flag, if you don't mind me asking? While he was in prison or once he got out? The Both. first red flag. The first red flag would be, um, I would say, 
when he told me he was he didn't call me for like a day and then I called the prison and well he told me he didn't call me for a day because he was in a hole and then he had somebody call me and tell me that he was in a hole and then I had called the prison to see if he actually was in a hole and they told me he wasn't so, so you already had doubts at that time for you to call them yeah and they told me he wasn't in a hole and then the whole time he was that day he didn't call me he spent on the phone talking to another girl Ain't there so it was like you really have to lie about that <laughs> 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 and he told me he wanted to he wanted to relax his mind he didn't feel like talking on the phone Oh. So he lied and told me he was in a hole. So I just thought that that was stupid. Yeah, that red flag. Yeah. That was that was. A, and then what was the red flag when when you feel like? Because uh, you know people that's watching, they may be going through something. I told you my mama. <laughs> my mama needed you back in the days right now. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Go ahead. Just like what was the next next red flag? When he got out, I would say like maybe a week after he got out. Um, he was like, he was going to go see his dad. He wants to go see his dad. So I wasn't tripping. And then it was like, he had his location on. And then it was like two o'clock in the morning. I woke up and he still didn't come back to the hotel. So then he came back to the hotel saying he got robbed and, um, how he was with his, I'm like, well, how did you get robbed? Like, did your brothers get robbed? Like, where he was they a Jesse, you know, yeah. Jesse Smollett on you. Yeah, he did not get yeah. robbed. <laughs> you could have pulled a Jesse Smollett on Oh, what's that new girl? They got a new one now. What's that girl named down there since you got? Oh, uh, Carly. <laughs> <laughs> like, man, people bored out here. People trying to figure it out. <laughs> so, yeah, so he lied and said he got robbed. But actually, in actuality, he gave all his belongings to his brother to hold for him so I could believe he got robbed. So that was just like, but this round, this one round, that just Smollett thing was. <laughs> <laughs> no man, like Chicago, it's in the water. Y'all was in Chicago with him. No, we was in Cleveland. Cleveland. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, so, so what's? I mean, you, you got to think about it, man. You, you, you done did your thing now. So, so what about you? Have you started? Do you have your own YouTube channel or you? I started my YouTube. That's what I'm, I'm talking about. Consistently. See, I ain't for the fool with y'all, man. I get mad about that. Yeah. So you gonna push it up? You gonna start working more? Yeah, I'm gonna push it up more. You know, I'm in Dallas, so I'm gonna, you know, vlog. Vlog, and yeah. My, do some um, shorts. Mm -hmm. Do some shorts. So do, you know, because that's important. You know, so many people looking to hear from you. A lot of times they can't wait on no episode. Yeah. They want to see you now in rare form. Yeah. In Dallas, <laughs> downtown. You know what I'm saying? Or wherever it's gonna be. So what's the big event here in Dallas? So I have a pajama party going on tomorrow in Arlington, and then Sunday I have a BBW. A pool party event. Wow. Shout out to my girl, man, Teresa, man. She brought you through, man. Yeah. That's your manager. How did y'all link up? Miss Baker. Is, 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 you, you, she from, uh, where's she from? Arkansas. Arkansas Little Rock. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And so, <laughs> how, how did y'all link up? We actually linked up through social media. What? Mm hmm. You be on that social media, girl. God. We clicked God. like first. You ain't seen me on them. I'm on that old man. You ain't say you, you used to be like, dang, that go ECEO. You don't see me now because follow, you, you following me today. Yeah. Right? We gonna get down. So, so what, so when you, what made you, what, what made you uh, reach out and what made y'all link up like that? Well, she reached out to me, and I just loved her from the very first conversation we had because I could tell she was, like, dedicated. Oh, I she knew dope. she was for me. And, you know, she just have a very positive and, you know, good vibes. I just really got good energy from her. She got that way about herself, mm -hmm. the way she affects you. You know, it's a thing where you be like, okay. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That she dope. Like, I'm rocking with her. Mm -hmm. yeah, shout out to her and her daughter, man. I met them in, when I was in Little Rock, so... It's just live to have these connections, man. When she reached out to me, it was a no-brainer. You know what I'm saying? I was like, yeah, let's get it, man. When you, when you, she coming where? What? I'm going to shut it down. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so I hope, you know, I, I hope when they, whenever you come to Dallas or if I'm in Chicago. No, you're in Cleveland. I'm where in you? Chicago. You're in Chicago now. Mm -hmm. You be moving a lot, huh? No, I always yeah, live in Chicago. Yeah, Chicago. Yeah, yeah, well, I'm just tripping off. The, he in Cleveland, you yeah, in Chicago. Yeah, he was in, he was in you Cleveland, went up there? so I was, yeah, I was out there. How I didn't move like out there. It? You went up there, like, how did you like it? I didn't like it. There's nothing going on out there. Like it was Cleveland no Browns can't win a damn game. I know it, girl. You like you like what the hell? I done got myself into. So I mean, that's so definitely not going back up to Cleveland. Yeah. <laughs> so, but like like when I come up to Chicago, I'm gonna rock out with because I do I do get up there. Like I say, I interview up there sometime, man. Um, like you know, um, when it, I gotta ask you this, like. Uh, give me some top threes. Give me a top three. I, I do everybody a top three. What can I ask them? Um, 
top three most influential plus size models or plus size influence. That's hard. Right I like that. Plus size influence. I would mm-hmm. say I love number one. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. Tell me. I would say I love Lizzo. I like her too. She's she's hard. She don't give a dang. She would put mm-hmm. it out there like nigga. This is what it is. Mm-hmm. Okay, and she from Houston, Texas. Let me go <laughs> say that. Right? So Lizzo's number one. Who else? Honestly, although the other two are usually like people that I see on Instagram. Really? Like who? Mm-hmm. Name them. Name them. Since you want to put them out there. Their Instagram. Whatever. I'm trying to figure <laughs> out how you so called gonna just name them over Monique. I'm kind of mm-hmm. mad about that. You don't like Monique that much. She lost weight a little bit. Maybe you upset. What you upset no, Monique? She, no, she not <laughs> <laughs> Why you, you you do you check Monique out sometimes? Yeah, I check her out sometimes. Well, yeah. you gotta understand, man. Like it's few and far between because, like I said, y'all. A lot of times, a lot of times, people are saying, "Oh man, you know she be she shouldn't even do this. She shouldn't do that." You know they be on y'all about certain things you wear and all kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So y'all have to be strong in this world. This this internet world crazy. Mm-hmm. So you say the t- other two would be on Instagram. Mm-hmm. So and you don't know their names, the actual you, names, like first no, their names? Instagram name. Instagram name. It, unless you know their first first and last name, if you do, you can name that. No, I don't know their first and last name. It's one girl that I follow. Her name is Fit and Fancy. She mm-hmm. hard. Mm-hmm. Shout out Fit and Fancy. You called out on Boss Talk <laughs> 101 today. And what's the other girl? <laughs> the other one, uh, I think her name is like Curvy something. I don't know. Man, that'll be hard. Yeah. You ever thought about coming out like with a clothing line and stuff? I did. I'm at, I actually have something in the works. All right, let's get it then. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna I'm call you up. I'm gonna call you out on that. I'm, okay, where is it at? You know, I'm the one be calling people. <laughs> I tell people, in there, you know, I say it's been a lot of people sitting in that seat last year in line. I'll be putting them right back. <laughs> That's crazy, right? Like, so you know, uh, when it's all said and done in, in your uh, career, like, what do you think? What, what if you couldn't speak? And somebody had to do a documentary on you in your life. What would you want it to be about? How, what What would you want them to say? Things that a couple of things that stick out about me. Yeah, it's your documentary. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, like how I really build myself up. Like I went through something. Like I wouldn't even say traumatic, but something so heartbreaking, and I still, you know, still chose to move forward and not allow that to hold me back. And to hold me back. So it's just like all about me moving forward and doing what's best for me. Wow. And putting myself first. Wow. Um, yeah, The uh, let's talk about the pool party one more time. Let's shout it out. One more time, where you going, what's, what's going on? The pajama party? Yeah, so the pajama party is going on tomorrow and then I'll be a special guest at a BBW pool party on Sunday. Man. Both in Arlington. Both in Arlington. Y'all better come out. Is it anybody can come or is RSVP or what? what is it? Anybody could come. They could purchase a ticket on Eventbrite. The link is in my Instagram bio. Already, y'all. Hey, man, y'all see it. Y'all heard it, man. So, hey, man, we love you. Thank you so You know much. that when I say that, it's time. It's about to be over. <laughs> <You're>... <laughs> and what is your Instagram link? Again. Miss Nick, M-I-S-S dot N-I-Q-U-E. Okay. Say, man, we love you. I don't know, it's been fun. <laughs> man, listen, anytime you're in the D, you can come see me. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, man, hey, man, listen, it's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. And we out.